the interaction between uh, IPC and CRCM, I think, has been uh, uh, really uh, useful for both uh, institutions. Uh, in fact, it, it's difficult to separate uh, these two entities uh, just because, uh, as you know, uh, IPC is, uh, is part of uh, CRCM. It, it's uh, uh, one of its uh, supervisory uh, authorities. Uh, but also uh, because of the people, because uh, uh, many clinicians of IPC uh, uh, are working in, uh, in the research labs uh, of the CRCM. And the, the reverse is also true because uh, um, some uh, IPC employees are working in research labs of the CRCM. So for us in the current life, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to separate the two entities. Uh, but beyond this, uh, this precision, the productivity of this uh, interaction is quite obvious for uh, everybody at different levels. Um, the first, I think, is, uh, uh, and it's, uh, the final goal is to, uh, to bring and to accelerate uh, the transfer of uh, innovation to the patient. So clearly, uh, it's obvious uh, when we talk about uh, technologies, for example, for diagnosis, prognosis, uh, such as what we've done uh, 10 or 15 years ago with the development of uh, uh, next generation sequencing or the development of uh, uh, transcriptomics. And uh, uh, it started first in the research labs of the CRCM and rapidly was used by the clinicians for the treatment of the patients. Uh, another level and more, uh, it, it is the development of new therapies. Uh, and it's clear that the, the time between the identification and the discovery in the lab and the, uh, the moment when these discoveries are available for the patients uh, are much more uh, longer than for uh, uh, diagnostic uh, techniques uh, or for the prognosis. But it's also quite obvious and we have few examples here where uh, um, some researchers have developed uh, new drugs such as uh, monoclonal antibodies in which are now uh, in the uh, clinical trial and these trials are conducted in, uh, at uh, IPC. Another example of this uh, interaction regarding the use of uh, new therapies uh, is illustrated by something we, we try to develop, which is the circulation of information. So we have developed some uh, uh, meetings and groups of uh, clinicians and researchers. And initially we called that uh, uh, teams. So we have teams by pathology and there is a one a leukemia team which is working pretty well uh, and which was the, uh, actually the ancestor of the current Ohio department um, which has been uh, set up uh, uh, in the CRCM uh, and we also had the teams for uh, pancreatic cancer or breast cancer etc. And the idea here is that uh, uh, when a clinician uh, launches a new clinical trial with a new drug, uh, uh, he or she gives the information to the researchers uh, uh, just to make sure that uh, one of them could be interested by uh, the samples from the patients uh, under these new treatments, for example. Exactly, because the Ohio department and the other three departments of the CRCM uh, were done uh, with this, uh, this ID. Um, it's not only uh, putting some uh, coherent uh, ensembles within the CRCM, uh, but also to, uh, to improve the link with the hospital. And it's quite obvious for, with the Ohio department because uh, it's a uh, an immunology and a hematology department for research uh, and in the hospital we have the hematology department that I have the privilege to be the, the head of and uh, which is doing a lot of immunotherapy uh, uh, in the setting of uh, cellular therapy, CAR T cells, allogenic stem cell transplantation and use of new uh, monoclonal antibodies. Another interesting aspect of, this, uh, of, the, of the interactions between IPC and CRCM uh, is the training, specifically the training of the uh, physicians, uh, because uh, um, I would say that 90% uh, of the physicians uh, working at IPC who uh, have been trained for research did that training uh, at CRCM. Uh, and uh, it's, it's of course very important because when they come back to the clinic, they have obvious links 
with uh, their former colleagues uh, in the laboratory. So, uh, as you know, the IPC has uh, uh, the triple mission, uh, uh, care, uh, research, and also training. Uh, so, with this interaction with CRCM, uh, we uh, can ensure two of the, of the three missions, and this is uh, quite important. Uh, with the uh, Ohio Department, uh, uh, there is an, an obvious uh, consistency between the topics developed at the, the lab in hematology, specifically leukemia research, uh, immunology, and uh, what is happening in uh, the hematology department of uh, IPC, where, uh, as I said before, we uh, treat not only uh, leukemias, but we do a lot of uh, immunotherapy, various forms uh, of uh, immunotherapy. So it was for us a, a good model uh, for the development of this uh, uh, strategy. Uh, and uh, it has been quite positive. So um, uh, it's clear that we, uh, we, we would like to uh, develop further, but we have to take into account the specificity of the different topics uh, and the fact that for, uh, in the case of uh, solid tumors, uh, there is probably more uh, variability uh, and it's less uh, easy to have, you know, this very uh, consistent uh, uh, model, uh, but clearly yes, we are involved in this uh, into this process. We have created three other departments uh, already at uh, CRCM, which are uh, uh, closely connected to uh, to the clinical teams uh, at uh, various degrees. We uh, and this is uh, one of the forces of the. Uh, uh, anti-cancer centers uh, everywhere in the world and specifically here at IPC where we have a strong hematology department with uh, all the uh, solid tumor expertise uh, and we do believe that uh, there is a, a, a clear uh, uh, opportunities for c coming from the cross-fertilization of the of the different technologies and for example when we developed the, uh, uh, the next generation sequencing and the new uh, genomics uh, technologies here it started with uh, the solid tumors and we could transfer uh, these technologies very rapidly to uh, to uh, leukemia research and it, from this point of view it has been quite positive and the reverse was done with the, the immunology uh, at uh, Daniel Olive's uh, uh, laboratory where uh, the lab started uh, to work on the uh, immunology uh, in leukemias and then uh, enlarge uh, the spectrum of its activity to solid tumors. Oh, the answer is easy, it's mandatory. So uh, it's not possible to do today to, uh, uh, to have uh, uh, an isolated uh, research activity. So it's fundamental that we can interact as much as possible with colleagues. Uh, and as uh, Hartmut explained during his talk, uh, uh, in most of our uh, different cancers, including leukemias, uh, the progress we've made uh, in the, for the diagnostic of the uh, disease uh, led to uh, a dissection of different entities. So now, when 20 or 30 years ago we had two types of acute leukemias, now we have uh, 15 or 20. And we are, when we are doing uh, research to uh, study the different subgroups, uh, if we work alone, we don't have the critical mass to study uh, properly this, uh, these different entities. And it's obvious when we do clinical trials, because if you are not able to include more than 10 patients a year uh, in a clinical trial, then you have no results. The celebration of the 50th anniversary of CRCM is uh, very important for IPC too because it's a, a moment when we gather, when we look at the past, what we've done, uh, but also it's a, a moment when we, we look uh, to the future. Uh, and we've seen this afternoon that there are uh, so many uh, young investigators, uh, highly motivated and uh, nice research programs. 
so I think that this day was quite positive and uh, uh, it will be uh, very uh, important to uh, continue these initiatives uh, under the umbrella of this uh, 50th uh, anniversary uh, and it's uh, what has been uh, already organized for the coming month when we will have uh, three other uh, uh, seminars with different uh, topics uh, in accordance with the uh, three other and organized by the three other uh, departments of the CRCM.